Tēnā koutou katoa, nō o ahua hau i Hawaii nei, uh, ko koolau te maunga, ko waihe e te awa, uh, nō hapani me uropi o kutipuna, ko Jason Prebo tōku ingoa. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Aloha mai kākou, uh, my name is Jason Prebo. I am the Forestry Partnership's lead for terraformation for the Asia Pacific region. And today I'm talking about our work and sort of the general, supporting the general restoration movement worldwide on accelerating native forest restoration. So I've titled the talk From Seeds to Forest, both in the literal sense, because terraformation has spent a lot of time thinking about how do we unlock native seed supply, but also in the figurative sense where I think we're still in that infancy of the restoration movement in the seed, maybe seedling phase in this audience, but uh, early days of supporting this restoration movement. And so um, a lot of folks have been talking about these two crises that we have, climate change and biodiversity loss. They're both accelerating. Uh, a lot of folks have presented good facts and figures and I think will continue after me. I wanna present more from an island perspective, how, how, this, how this looks. There's a native Hawaiian olelo no eao, or proverb that goes, hewa'a hemoku, hemoku hewa'a, which means uh, a canoe is an island and an island is a canoe. So the Polynesian voyagers, quickly out of necessity, realized their management of first their canoes, their va'a, uh, was, that was what determined their thriving. And then on an island, that the scale is larger, but you still have that limited resources, you have to manage it well if you are to survive. And then now, it took us a little longer to realize as a species, but the whole planet is really our canoe, our island in space. And it ha she has limited resources, and we have to learn all together to manage her well if we are to thrive. In Hawaii, I want to share uh, sort of our story. It, it starts good, then it's really sad, and then hopefully it's good again. Um, we are a jewel of evolution, as is Aotearoa. Uh, we are known for our, uh, you know, our isolated evolution, creating a lot of cool species, this, this very unique e ecosystem and high endemism. But sadly, from human, poor human land use, uh, we have lost around 75% of our native terrestrial ecosystems. This is my whole home island of Oahu shown in the map. And you can see it's very high loss of natives with the remaining native forest being just that green piece. Um, so we're now called one of the extinction capitals of the world. And this has damaged both the ecosystem services that we rely on and also the resilience of the remaining ecosystems. So our species, like those in the photos, are, many are endangered. I think we don't qualify for most endangered because we're not a country. Someone shared a stat like that. But I'm curious how we compare with New Zealand. Not that it's a contest. Uh, <laughs> ra race to the bottom, really. But the flip side of this grim situation is I think islands in general, we have, we're facing climate change and biodiversity first. We have small areas. Um, but this also presents an opportunity for us to be leaders in the restoration movement. Uh, I think New Zealand has already done this in biodiversity. It's actually cool, I wanna share, uh, it's really cool to be here because I actually went to Vic Uni uh, to study conservation biology. And at the time I did that because a lot of our best practices in, in Hawaii come from New Zealand. So I wanted to come drink from the source. And I think New Zealand has done that for biodiversity conservation. Not that it's perfect, of course, but I think we can really do this for restoration as well. Uh, the Hawaii-born astronaut Lacey Veach said that the best place to think about the fate of our planet is right here in the islands. If we can create a model for well-being in Hawaii, then we can make a contribution to the entire world. I think you can replace Hawaii with Aotearoa in there and it still works. This map in red, yellow, and orange show the areas in Hawaii that could be restored to native vegetation without including residential or agricultural areas. And you can see it's a lot. So there's, there's this potential to sort of flip the script and uh, become a hopeful example for the rest of the world. Now, so what does Terraformation do? Terraformation started about two years ago. Um, our founder was a former CEO of Reddit. His name is Yishan Wong. He wanted to do something about climate change and determined that on the, the drawdown, the sequestration side of the equation, which of course there's two parts of the equation, um, the best solution, really the only currently scalable solution is native forest restoration. So we're supporting the 2030 goals of reaching a trillion trees. We know that the trees are the symbol for a wider restoration of around 1.2 billion hectares, and that will draw down carbon. 
how do we do this? So our, our founders have a Silicon Valley sort of tech background. They have scaled companies and technology, but scaling a forest is really different. So we brought, they brought together a team of mix of folks that have tech backgrounds, folks that are scientists, ecologists like myself, um, carbon scientists, et cetera. And our focus is on really figuring out what are those bottlenecks that slow down the scaling of reforestation. So some of the big ones that we've been focusing on are seed supply at first, training, finance, and lastly, tracking. So the seed supply one, we talk about tree planting a lot. We don't often talk about as much how many seeds you're gonna need for that or how many propagules. If you're gonna plant a trillion trees, you'll need at least three trillion seeds, if not more. Um, and so that's, that's a bottleneck. We don't have that availability right now. On the training side, someone mentioned yesterday, we might need a lot of people to plant these trees. And those people will know, have to know what trees they're looking at and how, how, you know, the knowledge that goes along with that. The finance piece also has been talked about a lot in this room. Uh, we've found that you know, most projects, especially native reforestation projects, are undervalued, underfunded. And the last one, tracking or monitoring, gets to sort of two issues. One is that we need to track to learn, and native reforestation is much younger than other forms of forestry. Uh, we're still very much in the learning process. And the other part is that funders, investors, want to see outcomes. So you need to track that to show that and get the finance. So we've been atta uh, attacking these in our own way. Seed supply, we've made these containerized seed banks that run on solar power. They can be shipped around the world and are designed so that folks who maybe weren't you know, collecting or storing seed can do this um, to start building up their stocks. On the training side, just really scratching the surface, but we have three free online training courses in seed banking, seed, uh, sorry, seed collecting, seed banking, and nursery management, which are free. On the finance side, so in the beginning, we were seed funding projects uh, out of our venture capital to try to support them and learn through the process. And these were projects that maybe didn't have a good shot before they're having a hard time finding funding, but we thought they were promising. This past summer, we did a study of, of, of 230 different restoration projects around the world in 63 countries. And we found that 95% of them, uh, maybe this is not surprising, but see sustainable funding as a core challenge. And we quickly realized our approach isn't scalable, and I'll come back to that. And then on the tracking side, we have a software called TerraWare, which is for mobile and uh, web app. And this is to, right now, it, it supports seed collecting and seed banking, and then we want to build out the whole restoration, that uh, whole pipeline from the seed planting, nursery management, um, oh sorry, seed banking, nursery management, planting, and then eventually carbon tracking. Now, with these various approaches, we have made some good progress. We have 16 partners in 11 countries who are doing restoration on the ground. This is across five continents. We've put out nine seed banks that are now operational, and we're on track to plant a million trees, hopefully by the end of this year, if not the first half of next year. And we've plant, collected or planted 200 species plus collectively. Now, this is really cool. I like seeing this. But then if you see our goal, right, is supporting a trillion trees, we're not on track to hit that goal by 2030. So we know that our approach so far, we need to change something. We have to, one, partner more. We're going to need a lot more hands. And also to figure out better ways to tackle these bottlenecks, maybe more holistically. So there's two initiatives that we have right now. The first is the Seed to Forest Alliance. We launched this at Climate Week about a month ago. This really came out of our seeing that when we went to talk to sponsors and investors for the seed banks, people didn't really realize how critical an issue seed supply or the propagules on that first part of the equation um, were. We talk about the tree planting but, uh, or carbon, but that part is not being addressed. So this alliance's goal with these fo our founding members uh, shown here, is to really promote, raise awareness about this bottleneck that's overlooked and try to come up collectively with ways to approach it. Uh, we put out the Global Seed Bank Index, which is the report up there, uh, and that was looking at what storage capacity we currently have outside of agricultural and uh, silvicultural species. And that basically found, like there's four seed storage uh, places in New Zealand in that category. And 
we don't have nearly enough worldwide to plant the trees that, you know, these goals, these big goals that we've set. So the second initiative I want to talk about is our seed to carbon forest accelerator. So this, this we just brand new. We think this is the first program of its type. We're uh, open for applications right now and hoping to start the first program in January of next year. This program, the word accelerator is not that commonly used in restoration, but this comes from the tech world. And this idea is basically co to connect teams who want to reforest in biodiverse native, but maybe don't have the resources to do so and try to connect them with those. So we, we call those teams forest creators and we're, this program would give them access to carbon financing for the finance piece, the startup capital, training and mentorship, as well as the infrastructure for scaling, which could be things like seed banks and nurseries. And then the funders who would be funding this get a diversified way to support the creation of new forests. Because on that side, there's a lot of interest in you know, nature-based solutions, but there's a shortage actually of carbon supply worldwide, and particularly in biodiverse native forests. Um, pretty much 90% plus you know, is fast-growing timber species worldwide for carbon. So they would get a share of those carbon credits and a more diversified portfolio because native is sort of new worldwide and can be seen as more risky. So trying to uh, sort of help both sides of this equation. Now the phases, there's three phases in this program. The first one is three months. This is just looking at the feasibility of the project, project and doing some foundational training in things like alternative business models, the carbon markets themselves, and reforestation practice. Then phase two, for the projects where it makes sense for them to continue, we will look at really tackling those bottlenecks. So putting in you know, 200 to 500,000 US dollars to try to get them the infrastructure they need, if it's nurseries or seed banks, or get maybe a pilot project if they need to test out a method. If all looks well, and we expect you know, there will be drop off at each of these phases, if all looks well, the remaining maybe three to five projects will be full-blown carbon projects uh, in our first cohort. We're hoping to get about 10 in the first cohort. So these are our current on-the-ground partners. And I put this up here not to show how worldwide we are or anything, but actually to highlight the gaps. So this is not that many partners if our, you know, our goal is a trillion trees. And so, and, and one, one point I want to point out is the, this, this really empty region over here in my beloved Asia Pacific. Um, and we'd really like to fix that. So we're thankful, of course, for all the partners we have, but we're hoping to find new partners here in New Zealand and to the Aussies in the room in Australia as well. Um, and that's why we're down here. That QR code will take you to our accelerator program page. We also have a booth upstairs. We have free stickers, if you'd like, of Hawaiian plants. Um, so come check us out. So I want to end on another olelo no eao, or Hawaiian proverb. This one goes, e lao hoi mai na va'a i ke ka i ka hoi, i ka hoi i ke ka, pai aku i ka aina. And this one means everybody paddle the canoes together, bail and paddle, paddle and bail, and the land is reached. And I think this is a metaphor for this movement. We're going to need collaboration on a scale we've never seen as a species, um, so we want to promote that collaboration, whether it's with us, whether it's in other networks, and we're gonna need a lot more canoes and a lot more paddlers. Uh, mahalo nui loa, and thank you for listening. Yeah.